All right, Mark chapter 9 this morning. Sorry, Mark chapter 14, verses 3 through 9, we'll look at this morning. All right, it's good to be with you in chapel. This isn't really fair today. I look out and everybody's uh, in this area is uh, dressed down. So it's hard to get serious when I see face paint. So um, even in the high school spirit day, they don't pull the face paint out. Or is it mascara? I don't know. Huh? Did I nail it? No? I, maybe I don't want to ask. Probably don't want to ask. <clears throat> so Mark chapter 14 we're going to read this passage, verses 3 through 9. I was reading through here recently with the uh, church reading, and wow, it hit me uh, pretty hard. Verse uh, 3, let's pick it up. Mark chapter 14. Being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat. Of course, this is right before Jesus is about to be betrayed and crucified. <clears throat> He's at Bethany, which is real close to Jerusalem, about a mile away from Jerusalem. As he said at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of a spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. In another uh, parallel passage, we see that it wasn't just Judas, it was also the other disciples. But it definitely mentions Judas, and I'm pretty sure he's the, the instigator of this argument. But he said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. <laughs> they murmured against the woman. Uh, we find that this woman, the reason she loved Jesus so much is because she had devils cast out of her by Jesus. And she loved what Jesus had done for her. She loved Jesus. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? For she hath wrought a good work on me, for ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could, she has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. So this woman, she took what she had worked for for a year, year's wages, and she uh, breaks this over her. Jesus certainly was aware of the custom in the East. When a person died, their body was bathed and then anointed with oils and perfume. After the body had been attended to, that flask of perfume was then broken in pieces and placed in the grave with the body. So this woman did what was natural for someone that she really loved. She broke this ointment and she gave it to Jesus. And of course, the disciples and Judas specifically saying, what in the world are you doing? Wasting this bottle, wasting this money's worth. How dare you waste money on Jesus? Right now, right after this, the same guy, Judas, in the next couple of verses, takes, well, he, he leaves the disciples and he goes out to the chief priests. I mean, literally in verse 10, the next verse, Judas, the same guy, leaves and for 30 little pieces of silver, the price of a slave, he betrays Jesus. So th this isn't about the money. This is about what Judas actually thought of Jesus. Why do you waste on Jesus? Why do you waste a year on Jesus? Why would you do that? He obviously didn't have a very high esteem of who Jesus the Christ was. I'm going to talk today, run with this idea, the wasted life. The wasted life. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, opportunity. Thank you for speaking to my heart. Lord, I pray that uh, in our lives we would make sure that our lives are not being wasted, but that we're giving them to you. Please help us today to see this truth from this passage. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When I read this, my mouth fell open when, I hit, when it hit me that the wasted life, the wasted ointment, the wasted uh, 
thing that this woman brought to Jesus, so-called wasted, the disciples actually thought this was wasted. And, and then it hit me that I think a lot of young people, a lot of Christians in their lives also think, and I think sometimes we wouldn't say it. We certainly wouldn't say it, but the way that we act we act like it's a waste of time, a waste of our energy to give something valuable, really valuable to Jesus. Oh, no, no, we can, we can give a little bit. You know, we can give him a little tip. You know, we come to church and I heard about a little boy with his family. They came to church and um, after they left the church, the dad complained the whole way home that it was too hot. The sermon was too long. Everything was this and that. And finally, the little boy says, Dad, I thought it was a pretty good show for the dollar you put in the offering plate. We think that if we tip Jesus a little bit, yeah, that's fine. You know, give him a little every so often to keep him happy. You know, I guess if he asks of us the tithe, you know, I can give him the tithe. I'll slip that to him. And boy, am I really doing my job then. And we don't stop and think that what he really deserves, what he really should get from us is our most valuable thing. So what is the most valuable thing you have? What's the most valuable thing you have? Think about it. Well, the Bible says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So your soul, your, your life, your life is the most valuable thing that you have. So if you're going to give anything of value, the most valuable thing you can give is your life. Give your life to the Lord. This idea of waste, waste, what, what does that mean? What, what is the Bible saying here? Uh, it's a waste to give something to Jesus? Well, here's what Judas meant by that, I think. The word waste means to fritter away. I like that word. To fritter away. To misspend. To squander. To misuse. To spend recklessly. To throw away. So I brought with me a waste can. Now when I use a can like this, I usually call it a trash can. But the more proper term, and those of you who are more accomplished in the English language, is a waste can. So this is a waste can can. What do we put in there? It's a nice waste can, right? It's a whole lot nicer than some of the ones I see in the guy's dorm and a whole lot. Anyway, but it's a waste can. What do we put in there? Things that we don't want. And this waste can, hopefully you don't put too much more than paper because um, it'll come back out. But we put our garbage in the garbage can. We put our waste in in the waste can, we have things we don't need, we have things we don't want, and we throw them in the can. File 13. You know what we call that? We're going to put it away. That's garbage. That's the trash. And that's what Judas is saying. Hey, you're misspending. You can put that to much more uh, profitable use if you don't give it to Jesus. Hang on here. I know that there's a real danger in our lives of thinking the same thing. I, if I give that to Jesus, then, then I'm not going to have the joy of my life anymore. If I give that to Jesus, I'm going to be deprived of what I really want. So I'm not going to, it's a waste to give your life to Jesus. Man, how sad. I was thinking of, Jericho. I didn't tell Jericho I was going to pick on him, but imagine Jericho is taken from Haiti as a little boy and he comes to America. Imagine if he went back to Haiti someday and started an orphanage and people would say to him, man, you got to go to America. Why would you waste your life in coming back to Haiti? Right. The idea of wasting <clears throat> there was, uh, well, you know the lady, Corey Ten Boom. We just had a, a story about her. She said this, I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. 
Jesus said it a little differently. He said, the things that if you give away, the things that you give away, you keep. And the things you hold on to and keep, you lose. Listen, that's what we're talking about today. Corey Ten Boom also said this, the measure of a life, after all, is not its duration, but its donation. What is a waste? It's garbage. When someone thinks something valuable, they don't throw it in the garbage can. They hold it. They protect it. What do you think is valuable today? That's really the question. What do you think is valuable? Is it something godly and something good and you're just disregarding it and treating it like trash, like it's something you don't really need? Let me give you a couple of examples here real quick. You've heard the story of William Borden, many of you. No retreat, no regret, no reserve. I got him out of order. No retreat, no reserve, no regret. He was a young millionaire who wanted to give his life on the mission field. Well, I don't know if he meant it like that, but he was literally on his way to China. And he stopped in Egypt and he died there on his way. Died as a young millionaire. Waste? Some people would think so. What a waste, man. He could have lived his whole life with lots of money and lots of ease and prosperity. William Borden. How about David Brainerd? He uh, was uh, in New England back, I believe, in the 1700s. I could be wrong. I don't have the time. But he was, wanted to be a missionary to the Indians, Delaware Indians in uh, New Jersey or something like that. And I know that doesn't make sense, but that was the case. He died as a young man, and, and it wasn't just the, the, being a missionary, but he died as a 29-year-old man praying. He spent so much of his life in great prayer. The Indians talked about how they would see him praying all the time. Waste? I, I don't think so. I think he's a challenge for, for many of us. In fact, there was a lady who used to come to our church. She, uh, I think she died about 17, 18 years ago. When she was young, she went to Wheaton Bible College about an hour from here. And while she was in college, like you, she dated a young man who had a desire to be a missionary to Ecuador. His name is Jim Elliott. Jim Elliott, of course, gave his life, went to the Ecuador as a missionary pilot. And, uh, of course, you know the story. He died on that beach at the head of a spear by the Aka Indians, 20 Eight years old. Waste? Was that a wasted time? A wasted... Man, he should have... You know, we could think of all the things he could have done if he would have kept on living. But guess what? God had better plans for him. Listen, that's the whole point. God's plan is the best plan. God's way is the best way. You're not wasting it by giving it to the Lord. Why would God go to such great lengths to warn us about how we spend our lives. He wants us to spend our days focusing on Him. Let me give you some thoughts this morning. Four, three things, actually. I'm going to hold it to three things because I, I want to get you out on time. Three things. You're not wasting your life by giving these things to Jesus. In fact, you're wasting your life if you don't give them to Jesus. Let me pull out some things I have here that I want to throw in my trash can, help you remember a little bit. First of all, your time. Your time. You, you might think that if I give my time to the Lord, I'm actually throwing it in the trash. So what do I mean by that? Uh, we know on a daily basis our time belongs to God. And, and we should give our daily time to the Lord. Isn't He worthy? Isn't he worthy of our daily time? Every day, spending time with him. That was the whole point. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, spend time with them. He wanted to. And they're the ones who broke that fellowship. Think about the purpose of creating man was to be with us. And we just neglect our time and we treat it like garbage, but not just on a daily basis. How about the time of our lives? Listen, 
you're young and, and, and you might think, boy, I've got to get to a, a, a position. I've got to get to preaching or a missionary right away. I've got to get to a position. Some of you, <clears throat> you you've got to get to a career right away. And you're thinking, boy, if I, if I spend my 18, 19, 20-year-old time in Bible college devoted to studying the Bible, then I can't get to the, whoa, wait a second. What are you saying? Is that devoted Bible study time a waste? And not just even that, but any time you give to God, is that really a waste? Your time? The Corinthian church, the Bible says, gave not just their money, but first gave themselves. They wanted their time. Listen, I think of that announcement that Pastor Armacost just made. Prayer time. Was that in vain? Was that a waste? All those years of Brother Johnson, and I know he prays, I mean prays and prays, and did pray for his dad to be saved. Was that a waste? Of course not. Listen, don't quit. That time that you give in prayer is not a waste. Boy, what a shame for us to treat God's time that he gives to us as a waste. What is your life? It's short. Have you ever seen a, a money machine? How many of you ever been in a money machine? Some of you have from, we have one here and we, I don't know how much money is actually in there. <clears throat> it's, it's mostly little cards that say, you know, a piece of candy or something like that, you know, something cheap. But, but if a real money machine, you go in there and you get one minute or what do we give them, like eight seconds, you know, <clears throat> so we don't have to give away much money. But so, so they get a minute and they go into the money machine. What if you saw somebody with that limited time in the money machine just kind of standing there? They pull something out of their pocket and start eating a granola bar. And they're just waste. That makes no sense. You have a very limited amount of time. You're going to use that time, right, to... What's the proper way to do that? To push stuff against your body and then grab it, right? You get the money flying around, you squeeze it against yourself, and then you grab it. Don't tell Mr. Ramos I told you the secret. But so we have a very limited time on this earth. A, a very limited time. Uh, check Psalm 90. Moses said there in Psalm 90, he said the days of, our, of the years of our life, they're numbered. We have a very short amount of time. You think, you think you have lots of time when you're young. And it's normal to think that. But you really don't. You don't have that much time. You need to get busy and give that to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. There's nothing better to do with your time than to give it to the Lord. <clears throat> Number two. You're wasting your treasures if you don't give them to the Lord. Now, I'm not just talking about the money you make. I'm talking about the money that you could make. Say, well, man, I have a job. I have an offer. I have, like William Borden, I have a million bucks. I can do whatever I want. Give up the op Sometimes, and I'm not, oh, not always, I understand that. But God sometimes asks people to give up the opportunity to make money instead of throwing it in the trash can. Listen, that money that you could make, that job offer that you could have, the, the life that you could live, it's not a waste if to give that up, to give that to the Lord. Listen, I have, and I know I'm biased because I have two brothers on the mission field, but <clears throat> those brothers, they can't own their own home. They live there on the mission field, um, Hoping that God will take, not hoping, trusting that God will take care of those things. So then they, when, if they get old or they get sick and they can't stay on the mission field, they'll have to come home and trust God to take care of their needs. Listen, they're giving up the opportunity to make money or to, to have possessions in order so that God can use the things that they do give to him. Those treasures are worth Giving up to God. You know, it's all his anyway. Listen, young people, don't go setting your sights on money. 
Set your sights on pleasing the Lord and let him take care of the money. That's the way it is. I remember many years ago, we had a, uh, our church was without a pastor and we had a guy come in and he was uh, candidating at our church. And we had a question and answer time after he preached. And one of the first questions he asked is, what am I going to get paid? <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's, that's the reaction we had. We were like, huh? Okay, that's, that's important. But let God take care of those things. And of course, he didn't become our pastor, thankfully. Listen, there's a couple examples here I want to mention. The pastor once stood before the congregation and said, I have bad news, good news, and then bad news. The congregation got real quiet. He said, first, the bad news is the church needs a new roof. And of course, everybody groaned. Oh, we've got to spend more money. The good news is we have enough money for the new roof. Yes. <laughs> Shoo, that's good. And then he said, the, the bad news is it's still in your pockets. <laughs> you know what? God provides for his work through us, through the church, through the people. Charles Spurgeon once was invited to go to a uh, a fundraiser to raise money for this church building. And um, <clears throat> so this wealthy man in the church contacted Charles Spurgeon before he came and he said, listen, can you come and be a, our speaker and help us raise money? When you come, I'll let you stay either in my townhouse, in my seaside house, or in my regular house. And Charles Spurgeon sent a letter back and said, I'm not coming, sell one of your houses and pay off the debt. Listen, God has already provided, but he wants to use us to do it. He wants to use us to do it. That's the kind of giving that we should want to do. Any, anything that God wants. <clears throat> so here's, here's really the gist of where I'm going. I'll mention this again. How hard does God have to work to get something from you? Does he have to squeeze you down to get something out of you? Does he have to work you over to give a Saturday on a bus route? Man, that's tough. I mean, Stephen, I mean, uh, Stephen in the Bible, I mean, he probably would be really impressed that, that I gave up my Saturdays for a bus route. I mean, he'd be impressed. Yeah, I mean, I know he got killed and, you know, he got stoned for preaching, but he'd be impressed. He'd be impressed that my Sunday afternoon I don't get as long of a nap because I gave it to go on a bus ride on Sunday afternoon, right? No, not, not really. There's three kinds of givers. Someone said there's a, a flint giver. To get anything out of a flint, you have to hammer it. Somebody said there's a sponge giver. The sponge giver, you have to squeeze them, and the more pressure you squeeze on them, the more you'll get out of them. But the third kind of giver is like a honeycomb. The honeycomb overflows with its own sweetness. Which kind of a giver are you? How, God, how hard does God have to work to get some time, some effort, some energy out of you? Oh, if I have to. Listen, we ought to be a honeycomb type of giver. Seeking ministry instead of going after money is not a waste of life. You're not wasting your life by committing it to Jesus. In fact, you're wasting your life by not following after the Lord and seeking after money. Number three. <clears throat> I had to stay with my T's. Trust. Relationships. If you don't give these to the Lord, you are giving them a, a, a waste. You're putting them in the waste. You're, you're uh, sorry, let me uh, phrase it the right way. You're wasting the trust or the relationships that you've been given by not heeding those trusts. Let me explain what I mean by that. The godly relationships that you have in your life are from the Lord. Some of us, some of you, treat those relationships with disdain and disrespect. And what you're missing is the value of those relationships. 
See, that's what a waste is. It's the opposite of value. Some of you, when you disdain or disrespect your parents, you're wasting the, the relationship, the trust that you have. You say, what do you mean by that? Your parents can be and are a huge help to you. Huge. Ask anybody who didn't have parents. You'll see how much of a help your parents are, how much of a help my parents were. Oh, no, they weren't a help to me because they weren't very perfect. Oh, not like you. No. No, no, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that they care about you. It has to do with the fact that they taught you a lot of things from the Bible and otherwise. It has to do with the fact that they want the best for you and have spent hours and hours and hours and hours praying for you. How can you just turn your back on that and say, you know what? I have my own direction. I have my own opinions. I have my own desires. I'm going to seek after these things. You're wasting that trust that you've been given, that, that connection, that relationship. You're throwing that in the, in the garbage can. The bottom line is we have to realize life is short. God, our parents, our authority, people that are helping us are there to help us. They want the best for us. Hebrews chapter Number 13, verse number 7 says, Remember them which have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the... I, I actually, let me... I think I'm in verse 17. Let me go back to uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 7. Remember them which have the rule over you. Here it is. Who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow... Oh, that's not just talking about parents. That's talking about people who are there to help you spiritually. <clears throat> your parents, your pastors, your teachers are there to help you spiritually and they have a huge interest. Listen, and I'm just one person out of many, many people in your life who have a huge interest in seeing you succeed spiritually. And what I mean by that is I've invested my life this way. And so have many, many others. <laughs> Pastor Dam and Pastor Arm, these people, they could do many other things. But we've chosen, we believe that our best investment is people. Our best investment's not having a job or a nice house or a million dollars in the bank. That's not my best investment. In fact, it'd be a waste of time for me to do that. We've chosen many people, your pastors, we've chosen to make an investment spiritually over the physical investment. By the way, I actually believe that every Christian should do the same thing. Every Christian. No, no, I don't, I don't mean everybody works for the church. We've got to have a church, too. You know, people that support it financially. But your work... Anybody's work should be done for the Lord. It should be done with the opportunity. Listen, I have to spend 10 hours a day at the mill, and therefore I'm going to use a big part of my mill working time, that's money, equates to money, and I'm going to give that so I can have a spiritual impact. That's the spiritual investment. It's not a waste to give your money. In fact, the only regret, you know it, the only regret you'll ever have is time you didn't give to the Lord. The only regret you have is the prayer that you didn't commit and take time for. The only regret, teenagers, is the time that you didn't give to the Lord. That's the only regret. The regret doesn't come by, oh, I sowed the seed, I went soul winning, I went on the bus route, I did, I did all these things. That's not, you're not going to have any regret from that. Don't waste your life by giving it to the things of the world. The trust that you've been given, the treasures that you could have or that you already have, give those to the Lord. And I don't mean you give 100% of your money. He's gracious and lets us keep 90% of it. But truly, it's all His. We take that money and we use it for the Lord. We use it for the things that He wants us to use it for. Listen, that's not a waste, never a waste waste. I can't help but think of Absalom and David when I thought about a wasted life. 
when I think about the regret that comes with a wasted life, David splurged himself. He had many wives. David splurged himself. He had great wealth. David splurged himself. He married daughters of other kings. He, he thought everything was great, but he forgot that sin brings consequences. And the horrible, horrible consequences, it just kept on piling up and piling up and piling up. And his sons keep dying. And finally he gets to Absalom and it all just, at least the scripture there records it for us. It just boils over at the great sorrow of heart. Oh, Absalom, my son. And you can remember the story. I mean, it's just heart-wrenching. I mean, his heart's just pouring out. What's he thinking? I, I've often asked that. What's he thinking about there? I guarantee you he's not just thinking about Absalom. He's thinking about the wasted moments in his own life where he should have been teaching Absalom and he wasn't. Where he should have been restraining himself and he wasn't. He's thinking about the waste that he had made out of his son's life. And a huge part of that was on his shoulders and it just all boils over. Waste, waste brings regret. Listen, give your life, give your time, give, it, give up. It's not giving up really. I got to give up my money that I'm, I'm going to give up a career for the Lord. What are you talking about? You get to do that. That's a privilege. Don't, don't think of it as a sacrifice to give something to God. It's reasonable. Romans 12. It's reasonable. Give, 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 give your time. Give it to others. It's not a waste. It's never a waste. Man, the regret that comes to our lives when we don't give it to the Lord. You'll come down to the end of your life. You'll be, well, I'm not the end of my life. I'm 44. You get to my age, you get to double my age, you know, another 20 years after that and another 20 after that. You don't have to have a life that's full of regret. My parents are in their mid-70s. They don't have a life full of regret. If they wouldn't have gotten saved and given their children to the Lord, they would have nothing but regret. Guarantee it. All their children, boy, they wanted their children to leave. Well, for other reasons, too. <laughs> we ate too much. They, they wanted us to leave. They were happy when their children went to the mission field. They were happy when their children left home and went on their own direction as long as they were serving the Lord. They were heartbroken when some of my siblings, including, we've put them through a lot. You know, there's times where they were heartbroken over things. I mean, really heartbroken. And the, oh, it was always, that regret always came when we wasted our life, wasted our time, man, don't let your life be filled with regret by wasting it. <clears throat> Pull it out of the trash can. <clears throat> Give these things to the Lord. You will not regret it. You'll be happy. You'll be thrilled that you did that. 20 years from now, you've been, my heart breaks for the kids that I went to school with. Absolutely breaks for them. Uh, we had a small school, about 20, 15, 20 kids in the high school. Most of them are divorced. This is a little Christian school. Baptist church. These kids went soul winning on Saturdays. But they wandered away from the Lord, most of them. And now they're, most of them are divorced. Most of them hardly go to church. Nothing but regret. Nothing but regret. Listen, you're wasting your life if you don't give it to the Lord. Don't be like Judas. What a waste. <laughs> Why would you do that and give your life to the Lord? My brother in Belarus, he said people ask him that all the time. Why are you here? Why are you wasting your life? Of course, he's not. He's given it to the Lord and he'll have all the rewards at the end, not at the beginning. You understand? We want the rewards now. Give them to me now. No, no, that's not the way God works. He gives us the rewards on the back end of the deal when we get to heaven someday. Let's pray. Thank you.